Hello people, how are you doing? Welcome, my name is Adam. This is Memento Mori, okay? And today we are doing the 2019 mid-year book tag, okay? And I was kind of spurred on to do this by my good friend and therapist Juan at Just Juan Reader, thank you. And uh, I, I always like doing this tag, and in fact, this is the fourth year in a row in which I'm doing this. I'll link the other three years down below. Uh, and really, consistency is the word, okay? Yeah, I always like this tag because it's a great way at the midpoint of the year. Uh, and I know we're a little bit early here in the first half of June, but still, you know, close enough. Uh, but it, it's a great way to touch base and, and to talk about some of the books that I've enjoyed uh, you know, up until this point. So there's quite a few questions. I'm, I'm going to attempt to run them down uh, relatively quickly. So uh, but, uh, question number one is the best book you've read so far in 2019. And uh, I could definitely pull kind of a more uh, hip answer for this, but, you know, I have to stay true to myself. I have to stay true to my soul. And uh, the, the best thing I've read so far this year is uh, The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. Okay, people? And uh, just, just look at me. Look in my eyes, okay? My eyes sparkle. Flowers are falling out of my mouth. My sweat smells like Wessex in full bloom, okay? This is what happens to me when I read Thomas Hardy. And, and with each of his reads, I leave just a little bit more enlightened, okay? And uh, The Return of the Native was actually kind of the last of his major works that I've had to read. And uh, it's just glorious. It, it might be my favorite, uh, but, but yeah. I, I know it's not the most hip of answers, but The Return of the Native is the best thing I've read um, so far this year. Uh, question number two is the best sequel you've read so far this year. And uh, that's gonna be uh, The Looking Glass War by John Le Carre. And this is the fourth novel in his, his George Smiley series, his, his spy series. And uh, I've been uh, kind of uh, reading and in, in some cases rereading uh, the series uh, throughout this year, kind of reading one per month. And it's been so nice. And uh, I, I love The Looking Glass War, um, not only because it's just a damn good novel, but I really appreciate its place within the series uh, because this is the book that La Carre wrote following The Spy Who Came In From the Cold, which was the third book in the series and the one that really, you know, made him a household name and it was an international sensation. It was huge. And then La Carre chose to follow it up with this and The Looking Glass War was, was really poorly received by both um, critics and readers of the time. And um, I think it's... It's partly because this is a very bleak novel, uh, which to be fair, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold is quite bleak too, but I think more so uh, is because this was a very satirical look at a British intelligence community that was just wildly incompetent. I mean, he makes British intelligence look so foolish uh, in this novel. Uh, and I think kind of the satirical aspects of that were lost, uh, especially uh, within UK readers of the time. But again, I love it and I, I appreciate its place, again, because it followed The Spy Who Came In From The Cold and then the book to come after this was Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which is widely considered, you know, the best book in the series by many. So it, it's, it's a weird book kind of sandwiched in between two greats. And uh, it's, it's for that reason uh, that, that I really appreciate The Looking Glass War. And, and as with most of the novels in this, this can certainly be read as a standalone. So I, I recommend it. I'm actually going to combine the next two questions. Uh, the third being a new release you haven't read but want to uh, the fourth being the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Didn't have anything uh, really that, that's been a new release that uh, I haven't gotten to already that I've wanted to. Uh, but coming up here very soon, uh, I, I wanted to mention uh, Deep River by Carl Melantes, okay? And if you watched my recent video, uh, the last video I posted, you'd know that I'm actually in the middle of Matterhorn, uh, which is Melantes's debut novel. It was published in 2010. 
big, huge epic uh, involving the Vietnam War, uh, a book that took him like 30 years to complete. And now, uh, nine years later, he's releasing um, Deep River, okay? Uh, and this comes out in early July. And it was actually the news of, of this book being published that really spurred me into finally, you know, picking up Matterhorn and diving into it because it's it's a book that had, had been on my shelf for, for quite some time. So looking forward to working my way through that and then um, before the year is up, uh, immersing myself in, in Deep River, which is even longer, 700 pages. It's about uh, Finnish immigrants at the turn of the century who become uh, loggers in uh, rural Washington state. Uh, and you know, that's, that's buttons all over the place for me. So I'm all about it and I'm excited to uh, get to Deep River. So Carl Melante. Uh, question number five is the biggest disappointment. And that's gonna be Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. I read the whole damn thing, people. Uh, and it was a mess. Um, probably not the worst novel I've read all year, but um, I, I, I'd say it's the biggest disappointment, uh, especially just in terms of, of the reading community that surrounds me. I don't think I've witnessed more of a giant hype just collapse into this, you know, total state of disappointment. Uh, especially, you know, I follow a lot of people on, on um, Instagram and the Bookstagram community. So many people were so excited for this book and they all got it right when it came out and they, they you know, published their pictures of it and dived into it. And the vast majority of those people never finished the novel. Um, I think it, it was just a mess. And uh, I think it was a huge misstep for Marlon James. I think it's an even bigger misstep that he's turning this into a trilogy because even the people that pretended to like this book, I can't imagine them doing so for, for two more entries of this. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think it was um, just a big disappointment all around. Uh, but let me know, let me know your own experience with uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf because I know many of you uh, read it or attempted to read it. Question number six is the biggest surprise. And uh, for this, I'm gonna say uh, a novel called Black Wings Has My Angel by Elliot Chase, uh, which is, uh, kind of a crime noir following this escaped convict who meets this call girl that he falls in love with and he enlists her help in, in this giant heist. And it was just, uh, I don't think it's groundbreaking by any means, but it was just a really satisfying book. It was like a nice meal. Like, you know, the beginning was good, the middle was good, and the ending was good. And how often can we say that when we read a book? It was just a really satisfying read, and maybe I say surprising just because Elliot Chase is, is a relatively obscure author, um, but this book absolutely will, will sit on my shelf right next to, you know, Raymond Chandler and Jim Thompson and James Cain and, and uh, Hammett and all those hard-boiled dudes. Uh, this book will, will proudly uh, stand on the same shelf, so really enjoyed it. Uh, question seven, is your favorite new author, debut, or new to you? Uh, and that was an easy one. It's going to be uh, Helen DeWitt, man. Helen DeWitt. Uh, I read The Last Samurai earlier this year, and I just think it's a masterpiece. It's so good. And I left it just feeling bewildered at how intelligent and funny and weird DeWitt's mind is. And uh, The Last Samurai was her debut novel. It was published in 2000. Since then, she's only, only published one other short novel and a collection of short stories. And to be fair, I also read the short stories not long after this, and I, I didn't quite like it, but I still left it, really admiring the way her brain works. I don't know. So hopefully she's working on, on something else um, and easily uh, my favorite kind of new to me author of the year, Helen DeWitt. Uh, question eight is newest fictional crush. That's uh, the newest fictional crush. Question nine is your favorite new character. Uh, that's gonna be uh, Nick Corey from Pop 1280 by Jim Thompson, okay? Oh, 
this was so good. This was so good. Uh, and Nick Corey is the sheriff of Potts County, population 1280. And he is just this, this character that we're introduced as, as this simpleton who takes pride in the fact that he does as little as humanly possible as the sheriff of this small town. Uh, but as the book goes on, we learn that not only is he more intelligent than we were originally led to believe, but he's also just a complete psychopath. Uh, so yeah, Nick Corey, uh, Pop1280, uh, read this book, man. It's so good, it's so good, yeah. I am gonna combine the next two questions again. Question 10 is a book that made you cry or a sad book, and question number 11 is a book that made you happy. And um, I, I, I don't cry with books, at least not in recent memory, so I definitely don't have an answer for that. But a book that really invoked both sad and happy emotions was uh, Some Hope by Edward St. Aubin, which is the third book in a five-part series um, revolving around this just horrible, brutal, rich asshole drug addict named Patrick Melrose. And um, from my understanding, Aubin originally intended the, to the, for this just to be a trilogy. So even though this is the, the there's two more books after this one, uh, Some Hope definitely has a, a sense of, of finality to it that really ties in the events of, of the first two books. Um, and yeah, I, I just... Uh, I really liked it and it's you know it was a very kind of sad yet hopeful very melancholy ending uh for this just insane character uh so yeah i, I really loved it I, it's a book i really want to reread i, I want to reread the whole series uh and i haven't even finished the last two yet so yeah i i, I couldn't recommend the patrick melrose series enough uh and some hope was was happy and sad i really liked it Question 12 is your favorite book to film adaptation you saw this year. Uh, that's gonna be The Face of Another from 1966, uh, the film by Hiroshi Teshigahara, uh, adapted from the novel uh, by Kobo Abe, uh, the novel of the same name. And uh, yeah, it was so good. It's about um, a burn victim uh, who, who receives a, a very lifelike mask uh, that allows him to kind of uh, create a new identity for himself in, in many different ways. A incredible film. Uh, I actually, um, I have the book, but I haven't read it yet. So I'm looking forward to that, especially because last year for my, my book to film club, uh, we actually did Woman in the Dunes, which was another uh, Teshigahara film adapted from a, a, another Abe novel. So. Um, yeah, I, I loved that as well. So uh, looking forward um, to, to uh, reading the book that the film uh, was made from. Question 13 is your favorite review you've written or video that you've made uh, so far this year? And uh, since I've been gone, I don't really have anything to choose from, right? <laughs> I haven't done anything. Uh, but I'm actually gonna choose um, a, a video that I made for someone else's channel. Uh, Sean the Book Maniac has a wonderful thing called Camera Flip on his channel where he invites other people uh, to make videos for him. And he was kind enough to let me participate. Uh, I'll link the video down below. And um, yeah, I, I was very proud of myself because I was very well behaved. Okay, you know, being in someone else's home, you have to be on best behavior. Uh, so thanks again, Sean, for the, the camera flip. Uh, question 14 is the most beautiful book you bought or received as a gift. And uh, this is a little bit of a cheat because I actually received this as a gift at the very end of last year. Uh, but it was a gift from my, my good friend, Chien, uh, who also has a channel. I'll link it down below. Uh, but it is uh, the, the, uh, the fairy tales of Oscar Wilde, okay? In this gorgeous edition that's illustrated illustrated by the artist uh, Yuko Shimizu, uh, who is just incredible. She's a really prolific artist. Um, and it's extra great because I actually got to spend some time with her, uh, with Chien, uh, when we were in, um, in New York um, this past fall. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, look at this, look at that book. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, it's filled with uh, illustrations. Look at there, there's Oscar. Gorgeous, right? Uh, and yeah, it's just filled with her wonderful illustrations. Um, and you know, 
here on Memento Mori, we, we have an issue with the fairy tales, uh, but we do give a pass to Oscar, right? <laughs> right? Uh, especially when it's this beautiful. So uh, thank you, Jen. And then finally, question 15 are what books do you need to read before the year is up? Uh, and there's nothing, as always, there's nothing I have to read. I'm not a professional book reviewer. I don't really do like readathons and thematic reading and all that. So yeah, there's nothing I, I need to read. Uh, of course, there's stuff that I want to read. Uh, I mentioned that I'm reading the George Smiley novels um, by John Le Carre, reading one of those per month. So I'll continue to do that. Uh, I'd also, I'd like to reread my top three favorite um, Cormac McCarthy novels. Um, just because I, I feel I, I, I want to. It's been a while. Um, but again, that, that, that's all wants, not necessarily needs. So uh, yeah, that's it. That is it. Once again, it's been fun doing this. Thank you guys for watching. Um, please, anyone that wants to do this, please do so on your channel. I'll tag a few people though. I want to tag uh, Sean the Book Maniac. I want to tag uh, Chien at Recovered Academic. Um, Laura at Laura Frey. I love Laura. I'd love to see your answers, you know, touching base here in the middle of the year. Uh, Paper Bird, uh, Dee Dee at Brown Girl Reading, um, and I'll tag Richard at Richard Reads. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well, and uh, I'll talk to you later. No. <laughs>